Lovely. All right, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. So um, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge that wherever we are today, we're all on the lands of Aboriginal traditional owners. Here I'm on the Central Coast, so I'm on the lands of the traditional owners, the Dark Indian people. And I'd like to pay my respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging and thank them for sharing with us the immense knowledge on how to care for this country. So my name is Barbara Jenkins. I'm a sustainability education officer for Willoughby Council. And um, I definitely see a few familiar names and faces, which is lovely. So welcome back and welcome to everyone who's joining us for the first time. Um, so I will do a short introduction before um, handing over to our presenters for tonight, but um, basically, Willoughby Council has a green city plan, which is um, our overarching plan for anything that's sustainability related. And our target is to achieve net zero emissions from our operations by 2025. And at the same time, to support our community to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases by at least 50% by 2028. And that's comparing to the 2008 2009 levels. And our goal is to achieve net zero emissions in the 2040s or sooner. So as part of that plan, um, we're trying to encourage sustainable behavior change within our community. So we've developed an education program, which is called Live Well in Willoughby. And we have a whole variety of topics from um, energy efficiency, solar, sustainable transport, nature, food and garden, um, we have heaps of tips on the website. We have run a lot of workshops, events, webinars. I'll be sending an email um, after tonight's session with a link if you want to sign up to our newsletter if you haven't already done so, and a link to our calendar on our website with upcoming events if you're interested in having a look. So tonight's session will last just an hour. Um, we have a lot to cover, so we'll try and keep moving um, quickly through all the info that we want to share with you. It's being recorded, um, so I'll share the link to the recording tomorrow. Everyone's on mute just so that we have a better audio quality, but if you have any questions at all throughout the session, please pop them in the chat so that we can see them. And we'll have a Q&A at the end with um, our presenters. So I'll introduce the presenters in a minute. Um, I'll also send you an evaluation email tonight with a whole bunch of links and resources that you can have um, a read of. So you don't have to take too many notes during the session if you don't want to. Um, so we have tonight, um, uh, we have Martin Daniel, who is our Sustainability Project Officer at Willoughby Council. He will be presenting the first part of the session and he will be followed by David Veal, who is um, our uh, representative at Solar Pro, who is our partner through that Solar Bulk Buy program that we're offering our residents and David will talk about this um, in more detail. And we're also lucky to have Alan, who's a local resident of Chatswood, and he installed solar panels last year on his roof. And he's been helping us spreading the word to other residents because he's got some very good and interesting feedback about his, um, um, his uh, process through getting um, his solar. So with a further ado, I will hand over to Martin. Great, thank you. Uh, g'day everyone, my name is Martin, as Barbara mentioned. I am Sustainability Project Officer at uh, Willoughby City Council. Now, just bear with me a second while I start the screen share. Okay. Oh, my mouse has frozen, sorry about that. There it goes. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, Martin, Daniel, and you can contact me by the email address there if you have any unanswered questions after this evening's session. Um, basically, I'm gonna spend about 10 to 15 minutes here just taking you through some of the basics of solar so that um, when you go out to installers and look to get quotes, uh, you'll have a bit of the basic vernacular and um, uh, a bit of knowledge in your arsenal so that uh, you'll, you'll understand what uh, the installers are talking about. 
Um, okay. Why is that not changing? There we go. So the basics of a solar system, as everyone probably knows, and the most obvious component of the solar system is what you see when you go past houses on all the roofs, it's the panels itself. So they're the big blue or sometimes black objects uh, that sit on top of the roof. Uh, they are there to collect the sun's photovoltaics as they hit the roof. And what they do is they convert those photovoltaics into a direct current electricity, um, which then gets sent down this yellow wire from the panels down to what's commonly called the inverter. Uh, this inverter's role is to convert that direct current electricity into alternating current electricity. Um, this is the same form as electricity as you would normally get off your grid supply. Uh, so once it is converted into this alternating current, it can then be fed into the house via your uh, switchboard or, or your meter box. Um, and so all the electricity that's generated from those panels will then go through the meter box and into your house to be used by whatever components it is you're, you have switched on at that point in time. Now, any excess electricity you have after it's supplied the power to whatever you're using at this point in time will then obviously not be able to be used. So that would be sent back out the green wire you see there and back up into the utility system, uh, the grid. Um, if you don't have a battery, obviously you cannot store that power for later. And so the only option for it is to send it back into the grid. And for that reason, what you'll find is that most retailers will give you what is called a feed-in tariff for that extra electricity that you're not using going back into the grid. This will generally range from around five to seven cents per kilowatt hour of electricity you send back. If you do have a battery, uh, then that is where you can store that power for later usage at night, um, which will save you more money on your electricity usage because obviously any power you use uh, is more cost effective than selling it back into the grid. Now, once you've installed the solar system on your roof, uh, what you'll find quite quickly is that you never actually generate the amount of power that is on the nameplate of the system. Yeah, there's never really, I, well, there is when it's beautiful and sunny, but there's factors that affect that perfect performance. Um, and so these common factors that you'll see that affect performance and reduce your output are things that can either be unpredictable or predictable. Now, weather, which is the first one on the list there, that is a rather unpredictable factor and hasn't been the most favorable uh, factor of late either. Um, but when it comes to shadowing or shading, which is the same effect you get from weather, there can also be predictable shadowing or shading that can affect your performance. And that can come from things that are closely located trees next to your house, other buildings which might be taller and cast a shadow across your house. Now these are predictable forms of, of shading. Um, and there are certain engineering controls that can also be put in place to help you overcome that. Uh, David will go through them in a bit more detail later as they offer some of these engineering controls as part of their systems. Uh, but commonly what I'm talking about is optimizers or another form of control is um, micro inverters. And what these do is allow the panels to operate independently. So a lot of traditionally, uh, and commonly solar panels are all in a string. And if you have a bit of shade on one panel, it reduces the performance of all the panels that are lined up on that uh, string, as it's called, that, that connects all the panels together. Um, another form of uh, performance affecting is the orientation of the panels. So if you have your panels that are on a roof face that faces to the east, then you're going to get better performance from those panels in the morning as opposed to in the evening when the sun's in the west and vice versa. If you have them facing north, you're going to get your best performance during the middle of the day from those panels. Uh, another factor that could affect your performance is cleaning or maintenance. Um, usually there's not too much maintenance involved in a home solar system. 
Uh, the rain is generally enough to keep these clean, especially if you've got a bit of a tilt on your panels, then the rain and the angle is enough to, to generally clean these off. But if you've got a flat roof that your panels are on, it might be worthwhile having them cleaned once a year to minimise the amount of dust that settles on those panels and i.e. that dust will affect the amount of solar uh, PV that's hitting the roof. Uh, temperature can affect performance. So um, during the middle of summer on the hotter days, what you'll find is panels might get a lot hotter. They do actually lose a bit of their efficiency as, as they get hotter. Um, so they can actually operate more efficiently during the cooler months. But then again, in the cooler months, you generally get less sun hours that the panels are exposed to actual sunshine. Um, now panels as well, they will generally depreciate over time. Uh, what you'll find on average is it's about a 0.8% per annum depreciation in the power output that you'll get from your system, um, which will lead to about an 80% reduction over 25 years. And it's for this reason that you'll find when you go out to look at quotes that um, a lot of the suppliers generally will offer a 25 year performance guarantee with their panels. And that is essentially saying that they guarantee that they will not depreciate in generation by a faster rate than usually it's 80% at 25 years. But depending on the panel manufacturer, um, you know, different levels of panel qualities, some might be at 90% at 25 years, others maybe at 80%. That, that all depends on the manufacturer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the best way to maximise your savings when it comes to solar is to use more of your solar. The more you use, the more you save. And this is because, as I mentioned earlier, when you are not using your solar and you're exporting it to the grid, you're only getting about five to seven cents per kilowatt hour for that solar that you sell. Whereas when you use the solar, you are reducing the amount of electricity you're buying, which these days is at around 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So you can see that savings factor multiplies by four or five times by using that solar yourself. Now, you can use more solar through a few simple behavioural changes. And these generally all um, sort of go around the idea or the concept of load shifting. That's using your heavier powered devices during the day when the sun is shining. Things like your washing machines, uh, your dishwashers, uh, these sorts of heavy use devices, if they are used during the day, will maximise the amount of savings you can get. Um, it's also beneficial to purchase energy efficient appliances uh, so that you're using less power and i.e. more of the power that you use is then from your solar. Um, this can be with things like toasters and kettles, um, LED lighting is a great one. If you change from the old uh, fluoro lighting to LED lighting, you can reduce your lighting consumption by a significant amount. Um, you can also use things like timers to shift your devices around, especially with things, more, more modern devices like dishwashers and clothes washers. You can generally set delay timers on them so that you can run them during the day when you're not in the house. Um, and that way you can, again, use more of that solar yourself. Um, now, two units you'll need to know when you're looking at solar is the watts. Uh, you'll need to know what a kilowatt is and what a kilowatt hour is. So a kilowatt is power. Now, that's the power that you might hear talked about with your solar system. Um, generally, you'll be looking at quotes for solar systems range between about five and 10 kilowatts. That is the amount of power that the system can put out every second in ideal conditions. A kilowatt hour refers to energy and how much energy you generate or how much energy you use. And this is generally looked at over a one hour period or it's called kilowatt hours. So for instance, a five kilowatt powered solar system will put out five kilowatt hours of electricity in one hour. Now, when you're looking at calculating the potential of a solar system, there's an average rule of thumb, which is quite easy to use. Uh, in general, on average in Sydney, over the whole year, you'll get 
four sun hours per day. So if you're looking at a five kilowatt solar system at four hours per day, you will on average produce 20 kilowatt hours per day from that solar system. However, it's not always as straightforward as that. And what you'll see is through those factors that we talked about earlier and, and mostly due to the number of sun hours in a day, you'll get variation on that throughout the year. And you'll see that during summer when you have more hours in the day, uh, you'll find that you produce more electricity. And it's generally about half again on, on top of the average amount. So you can see in January, you're producing 30 kilowatt hours in a day from a five kilowatt system. Uh, so that's six sun hours. Uh, whereas when you go through to winter and the sun is lower and you get less hours in general in the day, you're only getting 11 kilowatt hours in a day produced from a five kilowatt system. So you're getting about half of that uh, average amount. It's a little over two hours there to produce 11 hours. Now, what you'll also find is that Unfortunately, and this is just a fact of solar, when you use the most power also coincides with when you produce the least power. And that is in the middle of winter. You're using more heat. And generally what you'll find is you use the most power in winter, you use the least power in spring and autumn when you're not using much heating or much cooling. And then you will approach again with your air conditioning in summer back towards that higher level. So you will, you will offset a lot of your cooling costs in summer, which is a, definitely a bonus of solar. How you can find out how much power you use is by having a look at your bill. Now your electricity bill, a lot of bills are done over a three monthly period, some are done monthly, but basically you can go at your bill and every single bill in Australia puts on the average daily usage. So from there, you can find that over that period, this bill went from April through to July, this household used 46.6 kilowatt hours per day. That means that five kilowatt system over this period was producing because it's April, May, June, in that order of about 15 to 10 kilowatt hours a day, it's using about a third uh, of the power is being produced by solar and then two thirds would be purchased from the grid in this scenario. Um, what you can usually also find on the bills is your 12 monthly usage as well. And you'll see that circled in the bottom left corner there. This only has six months on it, but if you've been with that supplier for 12 months, then they will have uh, that 12 month usage there. So you can get an idea of how much power you're using in each of the seasons. Um, another tool that can be very useful, and I'll show you a short video now, is the Sunspot Solar Tool. This has been produced by the Australian Photovoltaics Institute in partnership with UNSW. Um, and for all residents in the Willoughby Council area, you'll be able to go into this put in your address, find your house, put in details about your electricity account, um, how much you pay, et cetera. And it'll give you a report that will tell you a roughly optimized sort of system details for your specific household. So I'll just press play on this.
Okay, so as I said, that's a fantastic tool to use. If you just take a bit of time, look at some of the details on your bill and go through that process of inputting that uh, information. It'll give you a very handy, fairly easy to read report. If you have any issues with it, you can always get in touch with us. And I don't know why it's playing in, uh, but you can also always get in touch with us and we can help you go through that. Um, so now it's time to get to the partnership that we have on offer with SolarPro. Uh, so Willoughby Council spent quite a bit of time going, uh, putting out a request for pricing for partner installation companies to provide an offering to residents of the Willoughby area. Um, and what we've got on offer here is you can either buy just a solar power system set up only solar power and battery systems, or if you already have solar, uh, they can also look at retrofitting a battery system to your existing solar system. There can be complications in that and solar probably be best place to go through any of those and make sure uh, it would be suitable and compatible with any existing systems you have. Um, but what we've essentially done is gone through and found what we find to be the best value offer. So we're not just offering the cheapest system to the residents, but what we've done is we've taken a lot of time and care and effort to make sure that we've partnered with a reputable installer, um, that they have good quality parts and products that they're using, uh, that they have a great pride in their workmanship and their installation quality. Um, and one thing that SolarPro offers that a lot of companies didn't offer is that they will first preference, come out to your house before they do their quote. And that way they'll get to understand what sort of intricacies are involved with your roof particularly and where potential issues might arise that could result in variations, which a lot of other companies do this over the phone using uh, aerial imaging and um, they can result in higher install costs later on down the line. Uh, so with that, what I will do is stop sharing my screen and I will hand over to David to take you through some of the specifics of that offering. Thank you, Martin. Thanks a lot for all that info. We'll now pass on to David, to you, David. Thank you. Um, how am I going there? Have I got it right? Yep, we can see that. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna turn on my uh, presentation. It's something went a little bit pear shaped with mine as well. But um, thank you, and thank you. it was a great um, explanation there, Martin. Really, um, really concise and simple. I hope for um, for everyone. So, firstly, just a bit about um, Solar Pro before we dive in. Basically, we're in the Lambie Heights. We've been here for uh, twelve, coming up to thirteen years. Where Clean Energy Council approved solar retailers. We've installed over five thousand systems in that period. Um, we, as Martin alluded to, we only really put in quality equipment. Um, we are very big on post customer service. We have um, employed electricians and um, we, that, um, you know, that service all of our, our customer base, um, as well as we're one of the only companies that I know of that actually remotely um, monitor your system on a daily basis. So we can actually see if there is any problems, most people would find out by the time the next power bill turns up um, where we would generally pick that up before um, that would happen and um, certainly get onto it. You know, as I say to people, we're not installing a microwave oven. It's a complex technical system. So it does need to be, um, you know, it, it, it's, it does need to be looked at and, had it, and have someone looking over it, we believe. So that's what we do. And uh, we also have a showroom out here in Alambi Heights um, that you're more than welcome to come and visit and um, have a look and touch and feel the, um, the goods and see what a solar panel feels like and uh, see how the monitoring all looks. And um, so that's um, just something we like to offer as well. So diving straight in, uh, Martin's covered a lot of the, um, the juicy information, but what I'm here to do really is, is just um, probably educate people on um, some misbeliefs in the industry. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people are under the impression that solar panels need to go on the north side of the roof um, you know, that definitely doesn't need to happen. Um, a lot of people think you can't put solar panels in shade. Well, depending on the, um, depending on the, 
technology you use. Um, that is true, but there's also other technologies that are available that um, can allow passing shade throughout the day. And obviously, um, you know, a, a solar system really depends on three things. How big your roof is, is one of them. How much energy you want to uh, generate is another um, by how much you use, of course. And then obviously the um, important one and how deep your pocket is or how much you want to spend on the system is, is obviously uh, a factor as well. So we like to try and balance all of those. Um, but what we really are big on is um, sort of sending the message out that a, roof, a solar system can go on pretty much any roof. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a, a very good example of that. This, um, this property here is in Manly on Bower Street. It's quite a large solar system. It's a 30 kilowatt solar system. The, um, it is a little bit excessive, but I like to use this roof because what you can see here is we have solar panels here on the north. We've got some on the east. We've got some in the west. We've actually got some in the south. And we also have some on a flat roof. And what this, what, what is quite interesting on this roof is that is only a, around about a 15 degree pitch on this roof. Um, but the solar panels on the southern side actually produce more than the northern solar panels do for around about four or five months of the year. Um, and we can see that with the uh, technology that we use. We've got devices under all the panels that will allow us to monitor this. So no matter what your roof is or where it is, um, you know, your whole roof is fair game. My roof, um, just up here in Alambia, I've got panels on my southern side of my roof as well. So I'm not even scared to do it myself. So um, what you will notice here is a chimney with, um, with a bit of shade on it from that chimney. Now, some of the technologies that are being used um, will affect all the other panels from that one bit of shade. But because of the technology we've used here, in this case, we have one panel in shade. Your roof may have um, a wire going over it from a power pole, or it may have some trees on it. Or as um, that beautiful slide Martin presented with, you may have a bird flying past that might drop something on there as well. Well, with the, the technologies that we're now using, it's not as, um, not as bad as it used to be because only that one panel is affected. All right, but we'll talk about that a little bit, um, a little bit further down the track. So a system really comprises in terms of main hardware of the obvious solar panels, the obvious inverter on the wall that converts the power over into um, the alternating current that we require in the house. The solar panel produces a direct current. So every system needs an inverter of some kind. Um, what is optional as well, but we highly recommend them is putting on a consumption monitor. So when you are looking for a solar system, make sure if you wanna see how much power is coming into your home and how much is going out of your home, you ask for this consumption monitor because <clears throat> all solar systems can go on the internet. All solar systems will show you how much they generate, but not only that consumption meter will let you know how much is coming and going from the home. So it's uh, optional, but it's very important in my opinion. And then the, um, the other optional is the battery, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. Um, batteries are becoming more and more popular. We're putting in you know, probably four to five batteries a week and we're not the biggest operators in Sydney. So um, they're definitely um, certainly worth investigating at the moment. We'll talk a bit about that as well. So choosing solar panels, there's a vast array of them out there. Um, there's good ones and there's bad ones. And um, like most things in life, you pay for, you get what you pay for, okay? So the, if the, the things to consider with the solar panel is the efficiency of them. Um, efficiency is about how, how much power they generate over that space that they take up, okay? So every square meter produces a certain amount of energy. Um, the warranty is something to consider as well because the warranties range gr greatly. Um, also with warranties, a lot of the um, even cheaper solar panel manufacturers are now buying warranty with um, insurance policies and so forth. So, you know, you've just got to be a little bit eyes open on what um, panel and what warranty um, you're buying into. Um, the durability, um, we're out here on the Northern Beaches. Um, we do a lot of, um, you know, homes along there. Uh, for people who are living in the harbour as well, you guys are going to have some salty air as well. So um, being 
able to install a solar panel right next to salt water is not a given. Some solar panels can't be. So that's something to check. Um, the country of manufacture is important to a lot of people. A lot of people are, are not wanting to buy products from different countries. Um, local support is important. Is there somewhere to go? If, if I install your solar panels and my company falls over, um, God forbid it doesn't, but um, you would want to be going somewhere to claim your warranty. And is that, has, that, has that company got local presence here in Australia? And that's a really important one for everyone because there's been over 800 solar, um, solar installation companies go broke since I've been in operation for 12 years. Uh, we've seen lots come and go. So that's a really important factor as well. Um, and then, of course, price is going to be important to a lot of people as well. Um, and I've experienced a lot of people that uh, <laughs> don't really have too much concern about price. And we have people that that is everything. So um, they're, the, they're the things that you need to be aware of. Um, within the within the bulk buy program, we are offering um, three, or basically three different types of panels, but um, two brands of panels. And if we go go from the like the good, better, best, if you like, um, we're using a SunTech 370 watt panel. This panel's got a 12 year product warranty, and it's made of P-type silicon. So the the P-type silicon is the cheaper of the silicons. It's what most of the solar panels are made of. Um, the 12 year product warranty um, is not to be confused with the performance warranty that Martin was speaking about before. The performance warranty on this panel warrants 80% of the output at the 25 year mark, which is very in line with what Martin was saying before. Um, into the second panel, you'll notice the warranty has increased by a couple of years. It's still the P-type silicon. Um, but these guys, th this panel, they're just basically backing a little bit more than the first panel. You'll notice that the output of that panel is um, 415 watts, where the other one was 370. Um, that would, to the um, untrained eye, would, would think that that panel is going to be more efficient. Well, to be honest, that panel is pretty much exactly the same in efficiency, but it, the panel is made bigger. So just because this number um, is bigger doesn't mean the panel's better. So that's a really um, interesting one for you to be aware of. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got the best panel that, um, that we've chosen you know, within this offering. And certainly I would think um, the REC um, Alpha Pure panel would be one of the best panels in, in Australia. Um, they've also have got a 25 year product warranty. So that's, a, um, that's you know, another 10 years on top of the warranty that you would get from this SunTech panel. And the reason they can offer that warranty is uh, these guys have been around, uh, around about 14 years. I started using them 12 years ago um, and I was using another brand panel, LG Solar, which have stopped producing solar in the meantime. Um, but the, the interesting thing with this panel is it's made with an N-type silicon. So their 25 year performance warranty warrants 92% of the power. So where the other two panels are warranting 80% of the power at 25 years. So what they're saying is this panel ages slower and over that period, you'll get a lot more power out of that panel over the 25 year period. Um, and a lot of that, um, power, that power drop off happens within the first couple of years anyway with the P-type. So the N-type silicon would be something I would be definitely um, be recommending to most people if they can stretch a little bit further with the budget because they do cost a bit more. Um, the other part of, part of the um, system would be the inverter. So um, what, what, what we're looking for with an inverter is efficiency. Um, most, most inverters are around sort of 96 to 99% efficient, which means you know, you're getting what you're generating. Um, some of these panels will work on shaded roofs, some won't. So that's got to be considered if you've got a roof that is in full sun and it's all pointing north. Um, you know, you could get away with, it, with the string technology, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but if you're looking for, you've got shade on your roof, well, you're definitely going to want an optimized kind of inverter or micro inverter as well is another option. Um, you'll also notice up here in the corner, um, Solar Edge, which is one of the companies we work with, they even have an EV charging inverter. So you can actually charge your electric vehicle directly from the solar panels. 
and that's the only one of its kind in the world, right? So there would be probably 50 or 60 inverter manufacturers. These guys are the only ones that actually produce a EV charging inverter. And what that means is you can charge from the sun. So um, most EV chargers that you would buy, even if you bought a Tesla and bought their EV charger, it would charge from the grid and the solar if there was some, but you cannot specify. With this inverter, you can actually choose to just charge from the sun if that's what you want to do. Uh, warranty is important, obviously. Um, the ability to add more panels down the road, you know, a lot of people want to start small and maybe add a few later. Um, the string technology won't allow you to do that. And then, of course, you've got the price, which is, um, which is again, important. So here we've got basically two of the technologies that, that are available. There is a third of, um, one called the microinverter, which we, um, we're not offering into this um, into the, the bulk buy. I might just see if I can move this over here somewhere. There we go. So um, the string inverter, the cheaper of the kind because they've got less componentry. Um, basically the panels all wire into each other and they all work as one. So if we get shade on one panel, all the other panels have failed. Um, some of you may remember the old Christmas tree lights that if one of the bulbs blew, the others all blow, all right? So that's, that's this technology. Uh, it's the older of the ones that have been around since the 70s. Um, so it works well, it's um, a lot cheaper, good for roofs without shade. This inverter, you'll get a 10 year warranty with it. And the big draw card, I suppose, would be it's cheaper. Um, the technology that um, I have my, on my house, I have my office, and it's probably 95% of what we do now um, because of the areas we work in with lots of trees and so forth, is the solar edge system. And the, the difference with this is you not only have the inverter, but you also have a what we call a power optimizer underneath every solar panel. And what that does is it makes every solar panel work individually. So if we think back to that, um, that roof we saw before with all those panels all over it, that's how I know that the panels on the south work as well as the panels on the north, because that system has got these optimised underneath it and we can see what they're all doing all year round. One great advantage with that is not only does it produce more power because all the panels are working individually, um, the next one is if there's a problem, we can locate that problem remotely from our office here and uh, pick it up and you know, if there's a problem, we can go and sort it out very easily, cheaply. Um, so the big one, panels can be installed in shade on, on multiple aspects. This is the technology where you can add more panels later on. Because of this optimizer, all the panels can be different. On a string inverter, all the panels have to be the same, okay? Um, also with this, you get a 12 year standard warranty. It can be extended up to 25 years as well. So um, that's, you know, it's, it's pretty much, we put it on the wall and it's, she's rock solid. <clears throat> so putting that system in with a consumption monitor, this is the information that you would get. Um, this is a telephone app. It also comes on your portal as well, but this I find would be very important. Without a consumption monitor, this is that extra optional device we were talking about. All you would see would be this green bell curve and you'd see how much you're generating. What we're looking at here is we're looking not only at the production of the system, but we're also looking at the self-consumption. So this is a uh, 24 hour period, midnight until the sun comes up, we're in the red on the grid. And then as the sun comes up, the blue underneath the green is what we're consuming from the solar. And the green is what we're either charging our battery with or what is going to the grid to get your feed-in tariff for. So you can see here, the, there's been a device that's five kilowatts that's turned on that uses more power than the solar is generating. So this little section of power here would have come from the grid. Um, this bit here would have been sent to the grid. And then we're back here again, where we're buying from the grid and back down we go. So this is a really valuable piece of equipment if you're thinking of putting on a, um, putting on a battery in the future, you know, because we would come straight to this data and go, right, well, this is the size battery we need. We can see here in this example, you've exported 11 kilowatt hours, you've imported 10.7. So quite literally, if we put um, something like a Tesla Powerwall on here, you wouldn't have a power bill <laughs> on this day because that battery holds 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So whatever you've, you've saved uh, from exporting, 
you would be putting in and um, it, it would fill the gaps in the import, okay? Hope that makes sense. So these meters cost around about $450, somewhere in that park. Um, and in my opinion, it's a must for every system. Um, I might just slip over this because we're moving quite fast, but this is just about the meter in your house, your smart meter. When we put a solar system in, um, we contact your energy retailer. They come in and put the smart meter in. They do that um, cost free, generally within about 15 days of the solar going in. What the smart meter does is that green power that we looked on that graph, this captures all that and pays you back a feed in tariff. The feed in tariff slowly dwindling at the moment, um, they're not, um, you know, it used to be um, a lot greater than it is now. It can be anything from six to 16 cents. So it's very important that you um, do a bit of shopping around once you put your solar system on and find out who's gonna give you what kind of deal. And um, there's, a, there's a couple of government websites that you can use for that as well. So we're now gonna slide into batteries for anyone that's interested. Uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit about that. The big difference with the battery is to what Martin discussed before, solar panels generate power, goes into the inverter. Normally it would go out onto the grid, but if we've got a battery in here, what's gonna happen is the solar panels and the inverter are gonna feed the load in the house first. So the house gets first dibs on it. The battery tops up on any power that isn't used by the house. And only once the battery is full, then the excess power goes out onto the grid and you get your feeding tariff for. So the, the, the job of the system as a whole is to keep you off the grid for as long as possible. So throughout the day, even though this battery, let's say it's a Tesla battery, it stores 13 and a half kilowatt hours, you may move anything up to, well, my house, I've got a Tesla in my place. I move around about 21 kilowatt hours through that battery through the day. So what that means is the battery isn't just filling, waiting for it to go dark and then putting power into the house. That battery is very dynamic. So through the day, it's filling and discharging to keep the house from buying power from the grid. And a great way I like to explain this is if the sun's up here, punching down 10 kilowatts into the solar panels, the solar panels are uh, you know, happily chewing away on their 10, that 10 is getting sucked up by the house and a cloud comes over. Now the house is still using 10, but the um, solar is only generating say five, or well, that other five would come out of the battery to fill the gap. So you don't buy power off the grid. So it, it, um, it, it's, a, it's a great little, um, little add-on that is optional, but um, as I said, it, I'm, um, I'm a big advocate for it. Um, so we've really reached the tipping point with um, the technology. The technology, you know, it's come a long way. Um, what we're finding now is prices are not going down. People, and we, we were amongst those thinking that the prices will decrease over time. Unfortunately, prices have only gone up over time. In fact, the battery now is nearly twice as much as it was when it first went in. Um, the first one we put in, we put the first one in in New South Wales at this Tesla, and that battery was $8,800. Now this battery, we're selling this battery for $14,000. So it's just been a steady increase. Uh, it's just been going up and up and up. So, um, and it's actually just about to go up another $950 in, a, well, it's actually gone up, which just so happens we've got some stock of the old price left. But, you know, you can expect batteries across the, the um, across the market to increase uh, probably by, you know, around the sort of thousand dollar mark. So the, the very cool thing about uh, the technology that we're putting in is what you buy today isn't gonna be what it is in five years from now. For example, the, um, the first battery we put in, it now has got two functions in it that it didn't have when he bought it. So it's not just updating firmware, we're updating functionality. So Tesla, you've probably heard of someone who's got a Tesla car that they get in the car one day and the car goes faster all of a sudden because Tesla have done an upgrade. Well, they've done the exact same thing with the battery. Um, they actually update functions and now you can do a couple of things that you never used to be able to do. So 
it's moving ahead with the times. A lot of people are sort of waiting for technology to catch up. Well, this this technology actually moves with you. You know, it's 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 changing as time goes. So it's it's definitely not a reason not to buy. So the benefits of the battery are the environmental benefits, which are obvious. Um, it, it just extends the amount of solar power you can use. So earlier Martin was saying the more solar power you use, the uh, quicker the return on investment of the solar system. Well, this, uh, this stands to reason here. We're now using another, um, you know, well, in my house, it, it probably doubled the solar system in, in the power and the battery, which um, I use throughout the day. So you're using more of the solar power. Um, one of the benefits, and this is a little bit of a got you as well. If you are writing notes down, make sure you um, speak to the people you're buying the battery from, making sure it's got backup because a lot, not a lot, there are quite a few different batteries that don't even have a backup function in it. Um, and most people would buy a battery assuming that it is going to back up. So you need to make sure it's got backup. And then you also need to ask the question, what sort of backup, right? Because um, some batteries back up the whole house. Some batteries will only back up a phase if you've got three phase. Um, but most of the batteries out there actually only back up a circuit. So you need to be sure on what you're buying and going into it, asking the questions about the backup. And backup is vital in Australia, in my opinion. You know, we've, we, some may have forgotten, but it might have been three years ago around December, um, we were seven days, I think, without power because of the storms. Um, you know, I had people in my street coming to my house to charge their phones, you know. It was, it's, it's, it's not until you're in the blackout and you put yourself in that situation, you really get the value of the battery. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a nice toy to have, especially when you've got one in that situation. So um, savings, so the battery obviously saves you money as soon as you put it in. You know, the next day you, you, you're saving money from it. Um, a battery with, a, with the right size solar system is paying back in around about eight years. Okay, so, well, you know, it all depending on how much you use of it and how much you are um, paying for your electricity, but that's, that's a figure we're getting out of our return on investment figures that we're doing often. Um, also, earning money from the battery is the virtual power plants. So now they're well and truly up and running. Tesla have just opened their virtual power plant. We've been working with um, another company, which is a private company, um, doing power, virtual power plants. Basically, in brief, what they are is you, you allow your retailer to come in and take some power out of that battery when they need it. They're going to pay you a lot of money for that power um, when the grid becomes stressed. So the grid, the grid um, goes up and down all the time. And if the grid needs power, they're willing to pay for it. So what they're doing now is with all of the batteries that are out there on the market, they can go into those batteries, you know, in a flick of a switch and dump a whole bunch of power onto the grid um, out of your battery and they'll pay you for that as well. So some virtual power plant um, knowledge is good to know when you go into um, a battery and it might be something for you. Some people don't like the idea of other people being able to touch their property. So um, it's certainly something to, you know, open your eyes out and go in um, eyes open, but it's uh, certainly worth having a look at. Um, so what to look for in a battery is the storage capacity, okay? Whether it's got backup or not. And I'll, I'll just get, go back on this storage battery capacity. Um, a few years ago, there was a company running around selling batteries for $6,000, but they only had two kilowatt hours of storage in it. So two kilowatt hours of storage might be enough to keep the light in the fridge going you know it's a very small amount of power so be aware of what you're buying and make sure that you know you know what it's going to what it's going to do in terms of capacity as well as um, the, the the backup uh, warranty obviously is important um, most batteries in the main sort of playing field now warrant their battery for 10 years and what they warrant is 70% of the capacity of that battery at the 10 year mark. So what that means is at 10 years, your battery's lost 30%. A lot of people have got this thing in the head that it, once the warranties run out, they're gonna throw the battery away. I would say to those people, 
when the warranty runs out on your car, would you throw that away? Probably not. <laughs> so, you know, the, yes, it's going to lose um, it's going to lose capacity, but it's still going to be a valuable asset for your home. Um, and price is obviously something to look at. And is it upgradable? Are you putting something in that's just going to sit there and age, or are you putting something in that's going to move with the times and be updated by the manufacturer um, and you know in firmware and function upgrades? To give you an idea on cost, um, I've just put the two batteries that we're offering into the um, into the system, into the bulk buy system, and I've put in a bit of an example on the bottom. So this is the Solar Edge battery. So the, this goes with that solar edge inverter. Um, the nice thing about this is everything's in the one monitoring platform. It's all under the one roof. This battery is a 10 kilowatt hour battery. This battery is sell for $12,950. And right here is where you guys work out what a battery's worth. Remember I said the battery two years ago was selling, it was a two kilowatt hour battery selling for $6,000 which works out at around $3,000 per kilowatt hour. Well, if we look at this battery, this battery per kilowatt hour is $1,295. And if we jump over to the Tesla being 13 and a half kilowatt hours, yes, it stores more power. Yes, it's more expensive, but per kilowatt hour, which is the important part, it's actually one of the cheapest batteries on the market. Okay, so for the technology that you get, um, you know, it's it's actually quite a cheap battery. Okay, so just be aware of that and just remember that calculation to divide the cost um, by the amount of, you know, usable kilowatt hours energy that um, is gonna come out of that battery over time. Both of these batteries carry that 10 year warranty, 70% um, capacity at the other end. And um, that's what most batteries should. Both of them get firmware upgrades and function upgrades on the way through. Um, and some of those functions are things like being able to load shift power. So you can uh, buy power and charge your battery with it cheaper at night when it's very cheap, the electricity, then use that the next day when it's more expensive. You know, things, functions like that are, are really important. I feel like I've been talking pretty hard. So it might be Alan's time. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna introduce Alan. Alan. Um, is a customer of ours and he's also a, um, a customer, not customer, but he's a participant in the Willoughby Bulk Buy Scheme. Um, and we've got a few photos of an install we did in Alan's house. And I think what I might do is put it back to you, Barbara, just to, to do some introductions. And um, I will jump out and have a drink of water and be quiet. Thank you. Thanks a lot, David. That was a lot of info. So hopefully everyone is processing that. Um, Yes, so thank you for introducing Alan. So we've got Alan, who's a local resident of Chatswood, who's um, happy to give his time tonight and be here with us to present at this webinar. So I've got a few questions for you, Alan. Um, just checking you're still online and you can hear me okay. You might have to unmute yourself. <clears throat> So just about Alan's system while he's trying to get up, unmuted, I'll, I might as well fill the space. <laughs> um, you'll notice on Alan's place, he's got solar panels on the flat of the roof, as well as up on the angle. So he's obviously chosen the solar edge system. And you can see above his meter box over here, we've installed his inverter. That's our preferred place, not so much above the meter box, um, usually beside the meter box. I'm not sure what was on either side of that meter box, but. Um, but um, you know, because he's got the solar edge, he can have the panels all around the roof. He's got an aerial there. Believe it or not, aerials cause havoc with solar systems, um, not just because of the shade, but because of the birds that sit on them. And um, so you need, want to keep them away from your uh, solar panels if possible. Are you in there, Alan? Yes, um, yep, so I'm he couldn't unmute like himself. himself. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, I blocked everyone from a muting. So thanks a lot for that um, quick rundown of um, Alan's system. So Alan, can you tell us what type of household, uh, on the side of, size of your household and what type of house you live in so that people can relate? Uh, yeah, so it's just uh, it's a, a small um, two bedroom, well, it's a semi-detached house. So we share a roof, but we have um, 
about three parts to the roof. So there's uh, the tile roof at the back that's got the three panels on, and then there's uh, an extension that's got a tin roof, the flat, uh, two, two parts has got flat roof that's got uh, the rest of the panels on it. Perfect, thank you. Um, so what were your energy costs before installing solar and um, what are they now? So you installed solar in August last year, if I'm right? Uh, yep, yep, yeah. It's, uh, actually, it's been awesome. So we installed in August uh, during the um, <laughs> COVID shutdown, um, which made an interesting install for uh, the Solar Pro guys. Um, our, our bills, our, so there's only two of us in the house, so it's, they're relatively small. So we were sort of two to four to five hundred dollars a month, depending on sorry, a quarter, depending on uh, you know the time of year. Um, and since then, uh, well, I, I did see a question come up about what what's happened with the rain. So um, yeah, it obviously does affect it. So we we've basically had no electricity bill since then, effectively. So I think from August till January. The electricity company was paying us and then during the rains there's been we've had a bill of about ten dollars a month something like that right that's good to know thank yeah. you for also answering the questions from the chat at the same time that'll save us time <laughs> we're running a little bit behind so um what type so how did you choose the system and what type of system did you choose uh oh, well we'd spent like years thinking that we should do it and had never got around to it and we did get quotes over a number of years and then sort of didn't do it in the end. Um, you know, we've been wanting to do it for environmental reasons for a long time, but it's just cost and, and I don't know why really. <laughs> I didn't really get around to it. But um, so we had quite a few quotes and then the council offer came up with Silo Pro and we had some quotes from them. And I guess I really liked the um, the guy who came around and, and walked us through it and gave us three choices. And um, they seemed very professional and the quote was very, uh, you know, was reasonable compared to some of the others. And I also like the idea of the optimized system um, and being able to you know, track each panel and, and uh, I thought it was really good. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's why we eventually went with Solar Pro, mainly uh, you know, the council recommendation and um, yeah, we were, it was a very competitive uh, quote, I guess. Thank you, thanks for that. Um, and so you're saying you're obviously happy with your system if you haven't had any bills pretty much except in the rain. Um, what have you what did you do to maximize your solar um, using your solar? Yeah, so uh, so I guess a bit of advice we got was basically get as much solar as you can on the roof for the space you've got because you know we're only going to start using more electricity because we also have gas as well. We've got a gas um, water heater and we did have gas heating which we've now changed to um aircon um but uh sorry what was that question i think of no, oh, what do we do yeah so we, idea, yeah. I guess we moved yeah we moved from you know i guess previously we would have done our um, washing machine and um dishwasher and stuff in the cheaper electricity times at night and now we do it during the day when we're generating electricity so like today, I had the dishwasher on at um, you know, 10 o'clock this morning when we had loads of spare um, solar. Great, thank you. And I like that David is demonstrating your monitoring at the same time. So that's what Alan's um, system is producing. And you can see how much he's generated, how much he's using, which is really great. Um, anything else you want to share with other people, other residents that might be, um, you know, have still having doubts about installing solar? Um, no, it's actually, it was a very easy process. So, you know, we, as I said, we had some, someone come around, walk us through it, give us three options. Um, we did find out that our electricity box needed uh, changing because our house is, is uh, you know, a fairly old house and um, we hadn't, I don't know, the electricity box hadn't been changed in decades and uh, it didn't have enough power to be able to uh, supply to be able to handle both the aircon and the um, solar. So that was an additional um, piece of work that we needed to do as well. Um, but yeah, everything was done all in one day in terms of the install, it was very efficiently done. Um, we had it done during COVID. So I was in one room talking to people through the window or by text, because uh, we weren't allowed to actually see each other. Um, but yeah, no, they, um, that all went really well. And basically from uh, the electricity company then turned it on a few days later and. Since then, it's been going really well. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Alan. Thanks for um, being here tonight and sharing that feedback with everyone else. Um, I will take a couple of questions now that we have, mainly for David. Um, so, David, you can um, come back and I will um, ask you. We had quite a few questions on batteries, but I feel like you have you ended up covering the return on investment and the, the warranty period. So I won't go too much into those questions because I know you can talk about it for hours. Um, <laughs> so, someone, so people are asking um, what the, co the cost analysis, but there's a lot of question on cost and price and return on investment. So um, have you done an analysis on the cost to get all the features for the full system? versus the cost you have for using this electricity from your provider? With the battery or just with the solar system? Well, basically either. Basically, you know, we've got, we, you know, sorry to cut my answer off, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, we've got software now when we do a proposal that um, allows us to look in to every day of the week, which way the sun shines and actually look into, um, you know, the trees around and the shade. And it now calculates to, to a very um, high accuracy how much, um, basically how much um, you're going to make back on it. So we're not going in doing sort of back of the uh, tissue box um, guesses on return on investment. When you actually get a proposal, you'll get, you know, full, in fact, I can even show you something. I won't show that one because it's someone else's, but I'll, I've got, um, just, you asked, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is just a test one that I play around with. Um, and I can just show you on here, um, how, you know, basically what a proposal looks like um recover that and um and just so you can see that you know we we're not we're, this isn't a guess anymore what we're doing is we're we're going in and this um this, this you know we're going in and laying panels on the roof so i can add add some panels here you know and then the shade of this tree here might affect it so how do i know what the shade's going to do well, I can jump in and have a look at um, uh, and your sun access and I get and I can come in and it'll pick up you know the shade that's that's happening any day of the week on any one of the panels it's then going it, to it picks up what um, what at what aspect of the roof it's facing how steep the roof is so it's picking up the roof angle as well and um, and then what it does is it calculates it all and when I um, get a proposal put forward, um, it's going to give it give me you know pretty much every month of the year how much the bill is going to change, and um, and so forth. And of course, it's not going to happen now because <laughs> I'm on a webinar with thirty odd people. So, um, but yeah, look, the return on investment is very um, very you know uh, what's that word? You know, we're very upfront with it, and you'll um, get a very accurate, um, accurate return on investment nowadays with the um, this technology that we've got. Great, thank you. I'll just do one more question because it was asked a couple of times before we let everyone go because we're running a bit late. Yep. Sorry, um, this is me. What's that's okay? Thank you for <laughs> that for always giving very thorough answers. Um, is there a battery return on investment calculator available that people can? use to estimate their own um no return. it's all in this platform that we use i don't really have a different calculator um you know a, a sort of a rule of thumb or an easy way to do it is if you look at um my house for example you know it's a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery it's fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars um i move around about um you know, around about 21 kilowatt hours a day through my battery. Um, and if you average out the cost of money that that's saving, I'm in the, in the peak in the afternoon, which is when I pretty much use it just before it goes dark. Um, my battery is usually sort of empty by about 10 o'clock at night. 
So it's, you know, peak and shoulder power. So you're looking at around about uh, 40, around about 45 or 48 cents in the peak and 33. So it's around about 38 cents a kilowatt hour. Multiply that by 21 times 365. And then you can work out how much money I'm saving a year on it. All right. Yeah. If that also, makes sense. But yeah. there's no calculator now is the yeah. answer. Thanks a lot for that. But people, we encourage everyone to get a quote and they will get, um, like you will get, you know, all of the info and the team will be able to answer all of your questions anyway. So if you have an individual situation and you're not sure, don't hesitate to email us. I'm just emailed everyone. So you've got our contact details. Um, we also have an upcoming webinar on electric vehicles. If anyone is interested in taking that extra step. So I've sent the link to that. It's um, next week. And um, I'm sorry we couldn't answer all of the questions. We're running a bit behind. If you would like to email them to me, otherwise I'll make sure that um, to pass them on to um, Martin and David as well, if you want to email me any questions. And um, thanks again for everyone to be here, for being here. Thanks, David and Martin. Thanks, Alan, for donating your time. And um, have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.